Dear learners, welcome to an IOS studio. I'm Shubhra Sharma and today I'll be talking about the lesson personality assessments. If you remember, last time we talked about personality theories. In those theories, we looked at different perspectives, the psychoanalytic perspective, the trait perspective, humanistic perspective, and also the Indian perspective. Let's look at how within these, each of these uh, perspectives, we use different tools to assess the personality. The trait perspective was uh, propagated by uh, th psychologists like Raymond Cattell and Isink. 16 personality factors, the 16 PF is a test that was devised by Raymond Cattell. It gives different uh, statements which the individual has to select based on whether that applies to him or does not apply to him. It's a paper pencil test. Similarly, there is, uh, there's another test which falls in the uh, segment of personality inventories, which is known as the MMPI, Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. This is slightly different from the 16PF in the sense that it also tries to assess abnormalities like hypochondriasis or depression or PTSD. It's a fairly large test and takes a while to administer. Both of these tests which are known as personality inventories, have something very specific to them. These are paper pencil tests. They're given to the student or the uh, patient or the client to fill up on his or her own. People look at the items, see if those items apply to them or do not apply to them and answer accordingly. Another way of assessing personality is rating skills. These rating skills could be clinician rated or examiner rated. The examiner or the clinician uh, observes the patient or the client and tries to rate them based on certain criteria. Now both of these methods have certain drawbacks. It has been observed that people tend to uh, give response to the paper pencil tests based on how they may correctly or incorrectly perceive themselves or how they may want to project themselves. So they may also give very socially acceptable responses instead of being true or honest. This may happen consciously or unconsciously. The rating scales are also subject to flaw. A uh, lot of times an individual is looked at cross-sectionally in a certain time at a certain space. How he behaves on a long, in the long term, in the longer sense of things, is something that may be missed by the rater. Now the next set of questionnaires are based on the psychoanalytic perspective. If you recall, we talked about the psychoanalytic perspective and how it talked about the unconscious not being accessible to an individual and how uh, Freud thought that uh, the method of free association or interpretation of dreams would help access some of the hidden desires or motives. Two of the ways that are widely used in order to assess these unconscious factors, unconscious motives, unconscious aspects of personality are Rorschach ink blot test and thematic apperception test. Before I begin a detailed view of what these tests are about, I would like to mention that these tests while administering and while interpretation require a great deal of training and expertise. We are only touching upon these tests and you, would only, you only will know what they mean or imply. However, before you can start administering or using them for your clinical purposes, you would need a very, very thorough training and expertise under supervision. Now the Rorschach ink blot test is uh, a set of 10 cards. They have vague ink blots the, which are symmetrical and uh, some of them are black and white and some of them are, have colors in them. These are shown to the patient and the patient is asked to describe whatever he's able to see in that ink blot. Is it something similar to how when we look at the clouds and we are able to interpret the shape of the clouds to maybe look like an elephant or a baby? In a similar manner, an individual looks at these ink blots and tries to interpret them in, in whatever shape they are able to see. Now the next test is the thematic apperception test. 
This is more definite, not as ambiguous as the Rorschach-Ing blot test. The cues that are given are cards which have uh, images of uh, a person or two or three persons in them who are involved in some sort of activity. Thematic apperception test was uh, uh, made by Mare, who talked about a couple of things. So Mare said that the people, individuals have certain needs and these needs tend to interact with the press. The press is the environmental force that tends to interact with the need. Now, no individual is ever seen in individuality away from the social context that he's in. So there are needs and then there are presses and sometimes these needs and presses may be in conflict with each other. Now, these are the conflicts that are uh, aimed at to be identified through the thematic apperception test. To give you an example, uh, uh, while uh, an individual looks at these cards and writes stories about them, and during the interpretation of these stories, we may realize that the individual may have a very high need for autonomy. However, it is also possible that this need for autonomy is in conflict with the press of dominance. So he or she is surrounded by very dominant or controlling people or is in a very dominant environment, but also has a very high need to be autonomous, to be independent. And hence this conflict arises in that individual's life. Moving on, the assessment in humanistic perspective. Now, uh, if you can recall in the last lesson, we talked about the fact that the humanistic perspective talks about will, and free, uh, free will and self-concept. Hence, any assessment that is able to assess self-concept and uh, an individual's perception of his or her experience and life is used in humanistic perspective. Moving on, uh, in the Indian perspective, we talked about the gun, the rajas, tamas and sat gun. In order to assess these guns, you will have to use various methods. You could use observation, you could use certain questionnaires or inventories and understand which of these guns is predominant in an individual. Like we talked about last time, all these guns are in interaction with each other and some may be very predominant and some may, may not be. Hence, in order to understand that, you would have to maybe speak to the person, conduct interviews or use certain questionnaires. Now that we've looked at all of these uh, assessments and uh, assessments through different perspectives that we've used, I would like to put in a word of caution. We've only had an introductory understanding of these assessments. In order to conduct, to administer, to use these assessments, and to be able to score and interpret them, you need a very high level of training and expertise. Also, these tests tend to be used differently in different situations. Some may apply for an individual, but some may not. All of these will come to you once you have the adequate amount of experience. So, in order to summarize and conclude, the assessments used to uh, uh, study the traits are paper pencil personality inventories or rating scales. These personality inventories can be, for example, 16 personality factor or Minnesota multiphasic personality inventory. Assessments used to uh, study the unconscious desires or motives or personality factors of an individual are projective techniques. Two of them are most famous and well known, which are Rorschach-Ing blot test and the thematic apperception test. In the humanistic and the Indian perspective, we can use various measures which will identify correctly either the self-concept or the life experiences of an individual or understand the guns that a person may possess. Thank you.